Welcome readers with another amazing book summary. Everyone knows Yuval Noah Harari, the philosopher and historian of 21st century. His three masterpieces, Sapiens, Homo Deus, 21 Lessons for 21st Century are superb. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss future updates. The human mind craves anxiety. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. After all, worrying about a bear approaching you could save your life. Although most of us don't have to worry about bears these days, there are plenty of other reasons to be concerned. Terrorism, climate change, the spread of artificial intelligence, invasions of our privacy, and even the apparent decline of international collaboration. The historian Yuval Noah Harari presents a useful framework for facing these worries in his fascinating new book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. His previous top books, Sapiens and Homo Deus, respectively, dealt with the past and future, while his current book focuses entirely on the present. He claims that the key to overcoming our fears is not to cease worrying. It's figuring out which things to be concerned about and how much to be worried about them. What are today's greatest difficulties and most significant changes? He asks in his introduction. What should we be looking out for? How should we educate our children? These are, without a doubt, big questions, and this is a big book. Work, war, nationalism, religion, immigration, education, and 15 other important topics are covered in detail. However, the title is Misnoma. Although there are a few tangible teachings strewn about, Harari is choose easy prescriptions for the most part. He's more concerned with defining the parameters of the debate and providing historical and philosophical context. He uses a smart thought experiment, for example, to demonstrate how far humanity have progressed in building a worldwide civilization. Imagine trying to host an Olympic Games in 1016, he argues. It's obviously impossible. Asians, Africans and Europeans don't know that the Americas exist. No other governmental entity in the world, according to the Chinese Song Empire, comes close to matching its might. At the awards ceremony, no one has a flag to fly or an anthem to play. The point is that today's competition among nations, whether on an athletic field or the trading floor, actually represents an astonishing global agreement. And that global agreement makes it easier to cooperate as well as compete. Keep this in mind the next time you start to doubt whether we can solve a global problem like climate change. Our global cooperation may have taken a couple of steps back in the past two years, but before that we took a thousand steps forward. So why does it seem as if the world is in decline? Largely because we are much less willing to tolerate misfortune and misery. Even though the amount of violence in the world has greatly decreased, we focus on the number of people who die each year in wars because our outrage at injustice has grown. As it should. Another concern that Harari addresses is, how can any of us have enough information to make informed decisions in an increasingly complex world? It's tempting to seek advice from experts, but how can you be sure they're not just following the crowd? The problem of group mentality and individual ignorance affects not just ordinary voters and customers, but also presidents and chief executive officers, he adds. From my time at Microsoft and the Gates Foundation, I can attest to this. I have to be cautious of deceiving myself into believing things are better, or worse, than they are. What, according to Harari, should we do about it? Practical advice is sprinkled throughout, including a three-pronged strategy for combating terrorism and a few pointers on dealing with fake news. But at the end of the day, his big notion is simple. Meditate. Of course he isn't implying that if enough of us sit in the lotus position and sing om, the world's problems will vanish. He does argue, though, that living in the 21st century necessitates awareness, getting to know ourselves better and realizing how we contribute to our own suffering. It's easy to dismiss this, but as someone who's taking a mindfulness and meditation course, I found it fascinating. What do you think about the summary of this masterpiece? Tell us in the comment section below. If you want to buy this book, you can buy by clicking on the link in description. Thanks for watching.